This is New Mexico History in 10 Minutes. I'm Robert Martinez, State Historian of New Mexico. I want to talk about New Mexico's period under Spain. It ends in 1821, and it starts in 1598. We need to understand that New Mexico was part of colonial Mexico. In 1821, New Mexico becomes part of Mexico, but New Mexico was part of Mexico even before that. There's this idea that New Mexico had nothing to do with Mexico until 1821. That's not true. New Mexico was very much a part of the same colonial system that created Mexico. New Mexico was ruled from Mexico City, not from Toledo or Sevilla in Spain. New Mexico's economy was tied to places like Parral and Chihuahua, not to Cadiz or Burgos in Spain. New Mexico was religiously connected uh, as Catholics to Durango, Mexico, not to Valencia or Barcelona, Spain. So we were definitely part of Mexico since 1598. Never mind that Native American peoples had been trading uh, from Mexico into New Mexico even before the 1500s. So New Mexico's relationship to Mexico is very strong, muy fuerte, and we have a very strong Mexican heritage here in New Mexico. Of course, we have a Spanish past. I'm not negating that or saying we don't have that. We do. We have a Spanish past, but so does Mexico. So does Puerto Rico. So does Cuba. So does Peru. So do the Philippines. All of these places were colonies of Spain, and so was New Mexico. We were colonials. By the time we get to 1820, 1821, we are the products of over 200 years of being a colony, meaning we have Spanish background, but it's mixed heavily with Native American people in New Mexico and Native American people in Mexico, Mesoamerican Indians. We also have African people because the African people are also part of Spain's colonial system. And all of these people contributed to Spain's empire uh, in, at various levels, and that includes New Mexico. So our culture, our bloodlines, our language, our names, everything about us, if you get to 1820, uh, reflects that uh, colonial system that we were a part of. So what did we get from being part of colonial Mexico for over 200 years? Well, obviously, we have a very strong Hispano-Latino culture and people in New Mexico. But what about the Pueblos? They didn't disappear in 1598. Clearly, they revolted in 1680, and uh, they are still with us, and they're part of that colonial system as well. They're contributors. They're living in it, through it, uh, because of it, in spite of it. They're also there. And we were also, as a mestizo people, part of the colonial system, but we were also at the mercy of the colonial system as well. We have to look at the complexities of history and not look at things merely as um, men on horseback wearing armor or statues or swords, things like that. Um, it's a lot more complicated, uh, especially for New Mexico by the time we get to 1821. So I just want to... Uh, go over some of the main points uh, that still come down to us. Uh, one of the things we always hear about are land grants, Mercedes they're called. Uh, the, the system of granting uh, land to people was part of the colonial system, and that's why uh, we were able to exist in this harsh wilderness. Uh, the Pueblo people had their land, and they were able to maintain a good portion of their land base, not all of it. Uh, there were uh, colonists and settlers and the descendants of colonists and settlers uh, imposing on their land base, and they imposed on each other's land base. We know this uh, from legal documents from the 1700s and 1800s. So New Mexico is a beautiful land, but it has limited resources. So 
Uh, the more people you get here, the more friction there's going to be. Add Comanche people, Apache and Navajo, and Ute and Kiowa and all those other native peoples. And it gets to be quite a mix here. People vying for access to land and water, timber and pasture lands. So the, the, the land grants are still coming down to us from the Spanish period. And uh, they continue through, we'll see, into the Mexican period. But that's one of the main legacies we have from our colonial period. Obviously, our language, our Spanish language. Uh, the Pueblo people have kept their languages. They have many different uh, uh, linguistic uh, variations, and they've been influenced by Spanish. They had to be. They were in contact with Spanish-speaking people for over 200 years. But they've also maintained their language, though it probably changed to various levels. Later on, contact with English will also change it. Well, that's the same with the Spanish language. Of course, we have Spanish here since 1598, but we don't speak that same Spanish. There's an idea out there that we speak uh, Spanish from the 1600s, uh, pure uh, archaic Spanish. That's not true. We have some archaic word forms and pronunciation, but it's also interacted with Pueblo people and Genisaro people. Remember, Genisaros were slaves and servants living in Hispanic Spanish households. So they were also raising kids and they were speaking Spanish with an accent and the kids were learning Spanish from them as much as from anyone. And it's highly unlikely that governors and priests who came from Spain or um, the education centers like Puebla and Mexico City, uh, they highly uh, unlo they probably did not influence the local Spanish all that much. We know that they would comment on how strange or how odd the local Spanish was. Um, so by 1820, we definitely have our own Spanish, which is uh, partly archaic forms. Like instead of saying, yo traje, you say, yo truje, I brought. Uh, instead of saying, Azúcar for sugar, we say azúcar. Um, but there's also uh, deformations in the language. Instead of saying ciudad for city, we say ciudad. Instead of saying uh, pared for wall, we say pader. We switch words or, uh, and letters around. So that happens because the language starts to deteriorate over uh, generations of people who are not being educated in universities and people who are not literate. Add that there were uh, Genisaros who were speaking uh, Spanish in families, uh, Pueblo people also influencing the language, and Mexican words being brought up by colonists and settlers, bringing words from places like Mexico City or uh, San Luis Potosí, Aguascalientes, Zacatecas. They're bringing uh, local words into our New Mexican vocabulary. We'll talk later how English impacts our Spanish language. But by 1820, we have uh, a legacy of speaking Spanish in New Mexico, but it's definitely evolved into its own unique form of Spanish that's very similar to what we hear in parts of northern Mexico. Places like Chihuahua or Sonora, where they speak a very similar kind of Spanish. So our language is also our uh, uh, heritage from the colonial period. Another aspect is food. Our food is a blending of ingredients from uh, Iberia, Spain, and Portugal, but also uh, spices probably brought over from the Canary Islands and Africa uh, over to the Caribbean, and then foods are, are blended there, and then Mexico contributes chocolate, chocolate, and chile. Chile is brought up. Uh, tamales are a, a Mexican Indian food uh, product that is very popular in New Mexico now. Um, obviously, uh, this blends uh, with the local Pueblo diet of uh, venison, venado, venado, as we say in New Mexico in Spanish, um, maize, corn, frijoles, frijol, beans, um, a calabaza, calabacitas, squash. Um, obviously, you add the pork, um, lamb, and uh, one of my favorites, cabrito, roasted uh, goat. Uh, it's uh, quite an amazing 
cuisine we have here, and it reflects our history just like our language does. Um, and so this is part of who we are. Same with our music. It's a blending of all of these colonial elements. Of course, there's Spanish music influence, but it becomes something unique in Mexico with mariachi and norteña music. And we, it comes to New Mexico and it uh, combines with Genizaro and Pueblo rhythms and uh, cadences and melodies. And it's something that's really beautiful and unique. And so I want you to keep that in mind, our music, our food, um, and also our mixed race background. Yes, we have Spanish ancestry, but it also mixes with Portuguese. It mixes with French, with Pueblo people, with Genizaro Indians, with African people, and later with Americans of all kinds of backgrounds as well. Um, again, we have that Iberian Spanish background, but so do Mexicans, so do Cubanos and Peruanos and uh, Filipinos. They have it too. Uh, we obviously have our own unique Puebloan and Genizaro native people and culture that give us that unique New Mexico feel and flavor, but we're part of a bigger colonial system by 1821, and it comes to an end. So we'll see what happens when we stop being a Spanish kingdom and province and become a territory of the new nation of Mexico. Mexico. Thank you. Gracias. Goodbye.